appear that the best bitter had a bit of fun over the weekend. It decided to come out the top of the fermenter. That's the first time we've actually had a blowout and with it being on a relatively low ABV beer as well, it's quite a surprise. Uh, but that was a fresh pack, like uh, absolutely fresh of Nottingham Ale yeast. So it went a little bit wild. So whilst we're coming this morning, we've got Gemma with us today. Uh, so the plan is we'll get this little bit of a blowout cleaned up and we're going to start to process some of these casks get them uh, sort of separated into what's usable what's not get them cleaned where we can I'm going to put the safe into the pub I'm going to fix that to the wall and then I'm also going to see if we can get round to starting some of the timber work for the outside benches I've also taken some Foz gel Google it and uh, put that in the in the glass wash upstairs because it started to get a few mineral deposits on the element so instead of going and buying some lime scale remover I just thought I'd give that a whirl because we've got it in stock and that'll give me an idea as to how well this Foz gel is going to work on these tanks because we've got some beer stone on the inside of them as well so if it moves it off the glass washer I'd anticipate it'll move it off of this as well Fail that, I've also got some nitrosid to use. Both of these are available from Niche Solutions online, so you'll be able to go and see exactly what I'm using. Uh, so we'll just give that a bit of time to do its magic, and in the meantime, we'll get this safe wheeled around to the pub, see if we can't get it installed. for a little bit of waffle to the camera. Brought the boil kettle into the workshop. It's been a while since it's been in here, folks. Uh, I'm gonna make a couple of modifications where I can, or whilst I can, while we've got everything off it. And we're doing a little bit of a, a deep clean on the whole thing. So I want to add this, uh, this lever valve here. So this bad boy is going to be fitted uh, onto a threaded socket which we're going to weld here so first we have to cut a wee hole in there and then uh, weld the socket in whilst I'm in here as well I'm going to add some reinforcing bars to the lid so we can actually bolt the lid in position prevent it slipping and sliding off with the weight of the chimney then once I've done that I'll put the chimney on we'll find out where it sort of hangs down this side it's around here somewhere and uh, I'll see if I can, I'll see if I've got the steel to do it for a start but then we'll see if we can stick a few brackets on there to try and just take the load, you know, take the weight of that chimney off the uh, lid a little bit hopefully then giving us, giving us uh, less movement over the top we shall see, we shall see, so first job is hole cut just in there, just in this little section here 
and then we'll start welding the socket on. So you can see that I've actually applied some well deliciousness to this bar here. So that's now braced it. And you know, when you're welding stainless steel, it moves all over the place on you. You put heat, put it on my foot. <laughs> you put heat into stainless, you put any heat into stainless and it moves and twists and distorts and warps and all the other jazz. And every now and then, it warps in a good way, and this time it's domed. So, you know, I'm not going to grumble at that. That means it'll shed all the water on the top. So I'm just going to pop these bolts in the top. Then we're going to go and grab the uh, chimney, you know, the condenser flue, and we'll put that on the side, and then we'll see if I can find a few bits of stainless steel bar. I'm sure I've got a few bits knocking about. And we'll build a little prop with a little lifty lifty support brace kind of thing. Could even just weld a bolt with a slot. Just yeah, that'll probably work. And we'll put that on the side so I can take the weight off of the lid once we've got the condenser on there. You know it's not gonna fit on there in here, is it? Uh, anyway, we'll get we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um and I've also been back next door. I've got the safe bolted to the floor. It's approaching half past five, so I thought, let's have a Hawk's Head New Zealand IPA. Oh, Hawk's Head Brewery, Milliard Stavely, Cumbria. Oh, it tastes like a New Zealand IPA. It must be a New Zealand IPA. <laughs> so I'm not really wanting to stop much longer, to be fair, uh, but I will see how far we get with this i'll give Gemma a ring and when she rocks up she rocks up hey and then we'll go home freaking right we will crack on then so i'm just going to dry fit the spray mechanism to make sure i've got the whole thing in the correct orientation like if you know what i mean because it has to be in the first orientation for me to put the uh, adjustable mounts on it. Can you hear me? Can you hear me alright? I've got all this wrapping, look at this mic in here. Yeah. There's a noisy bagger. Oh wow, look at that, it's standing off. 
the uh, boil kettle now, you see. Now the lid's changed shape. Now I'll put some heat into her. Uh, she's changed shape. Just a little bit. Oh. Alright, let's loosen that. There we are. That looks nice. Yes. We'll have it at that. So then we can figure out where we're going to put these mounts. Oh, I'm not quite sure yet. But it definitely wants one on the top. So I'm thinking maybe I can weld something just off the lid here. Where it comes out. I don't know. Put something there. And then just well, maybe weld a bolt on. I don't know, I think this is going to take a little bit of time at the drawing board. Try and figure it out. So, whatever I do on here, this mount is going to be a little bit... I'll tell you what. Why don't I just pull the bolt up on there? And then, uh, yeah, I'll weld the bolt upwards off here. Or a nut to screw a bolt into. And then I can put two nuts on the thread of the bar and wind up and down a little bracket. Put the bracket on that way with like a little gallows so it doesn't bendy bend. I think I've just friggin' nailed it. So uh, that's gonna take a while to fabric cobble, I think. Yeah, definitely take a while to fabric cobble that. I ain't gonna be able to do it tonight, folks. But we shall make a start. And then on the bottom bit, you know, to keep the extra cone section that we've got down here, to keep that upright, I don't have any steel. I can't weld off the steel band because the steel band is squeezing. It's not, it's got, it can move up and down is what I'm saying, right? And it's squeezing the timber in. So if I put anything on there and it starts to pull it down, it'll sag and it could bring the timber down. Don't want to do that. So I'm probably either going to have to bring something off there that's hooked on, maybe like, yeah, some type of carriage, maybe just drop it down here and then it has another one. Now there's an idea. So I make a long arm, if you like, a piece of steel that just runs from top to bottom. You know what? Let's sketch it out. Can you see all right? I mean, I know it's not exactly a proper blackboard, like. Just use Froggy's glove. Give it a clean. How's that? Right then, so. we kind of got the edge of the pot here, okay? And the chimney hangs down here. Well, it comes down this way, actually. So what we want to do It hangs like that, okay? You can faintly see that. I don't want to, uh, let's try again. All right, we'll draw the pot first. There we go, and we'll draw what we're gonna do first. So, the pot has this lip around it, okay? Which we, uh, which holds the insulation. Okay, the insulation's behind that, and it packs the timber away from the internal, internal tank. So if we drill, a bolt here, or weld a bolt onto there, and then we can get some type of bracket, which looks like this, with an hole into it, and then that runs down like this, with a little gallows bracket there to stop it from collapsing. Are you following me? Maybe one on the other side. Keep it square, keep it square, you know what I mean? So we've got 90 degrees there. And then that comes down here. So we bolt it onto, we bolt it onto the bolt. And then where the thread is, the bolt, we can wind two nuts onto it. And we can wind them up and down to give us an adjustable height, okay? 
that moves up and down. Now we can drop this down the side of the tank and here it comes across and bolts on to the chimney there another bolt comes through to it and then further down the bottom where we have the other separate piece of the chimney we have another one and this can also we could also put some screws into the timber to hold it there so all the weight is being bared at the top it's fixed to the timber to stop it flapping around like a pisscock in the wind and we send our chimnoids into it like that and bolt it on in those two places I think that will work so I just have to fabricate this piece of steel here which has the screw holes in it for the timber and also the brackets to bolt onto the chimney. So I need to make this basically. So project stainless steel thing. Stainless steel bracket. That will do it. I think it was kind of a freaking awesome idea. I think it's gonna work. But you know what? That's about it for today. <laughs> oh, get in the frame. I'm terrible at this framing, Larky. Larky? Malarkey. Malarkey. So now Jembo's here. I'll tell you what. I keep interrupting myself. Now Gemma's here, we can go home. But I'll tell you what. Look at the space without the boil kettle and the mash tun being there. It's mental. And she's cleaned a few of these, uh, these boggart tanks. So let's just get a torch. We'll go and have a look on the inside of one. What do you reckon, Gem? You reckon you can uh, shine, a light shine a light in through the shive hole? Okay, and we'll send everybody in to have a look. So let's have a look. Oh, oh yes. We're focusing. So we can see it does need a little bit of caustic attention. Shall we try another one? What's around. this one? Yeah, spin that one round. So these these have just been rinsed. They've not actually been cleaned at all, have they? No, they've not they've really just been plastic. No, they've just been rinsed. So if we go in there, to say that's been rinsed on the inside, that's that's, that's pretty good. Mm. Looks pretty good in there. Pretty good bit of stainless in there. So I think, I think so far they're gonna be fine. So that is a good freaking start, I reckon. And of course, any that don't make the cut, oh, crying out loud, what did they cost us? 50 pence, a, 50 pence a cask. It's unfreaking believable. So other than that, we know what we've got to do tomorrow. Are you at work tomorrow? Oh, Jam's at work tomorrow. We'll be on our own, kids. Never mind. Well, we'll see you then, I guess. I think we're going to wrap it up. Here we go.